Hello everyone and welcome to the channel for a video brought to you today by K&F Concept, a lead brand in creating filters for your DSLR cameras and they even make trail cameras and backpacks, everything that you need for photography. Now this video is not paid for by them so you don't have to worry about this being a review that's paid for. No, in this review I'm going to be giving my honest opinion and helping you guys get some information that you're going to need for this year's 2024 solar eclipse. Astrophotography is not a hobby sought after by many people. In fact, it's a very small amount of people that actually do do astrophotography. And it's an even smaller amount of people who are actually able to afford things like telescopes. Because telescopes nowadays are extremely expensive if you want to get things that are fairly good quality. However, what a lot of people do have are your DSLR cameras. And so what we're going to focus on with this video is the solar astrophotography with a DSLR camera using the KNF uh, concept ND 100,000 stop filter. Now, without the filter, obviously you can see a lot of glow on the sun. You cannot see any kind of detail, and this is why solar filters are so necessary. And honestly, if I were you, I wouldn't even allow my camera lens and camera to be exposed to the sun like this um, without it having the proper protection it needs, which is the solar filter made by KNF Concept. As you can see, this is what the sun looks like if you do not have your uh, solar filter properly equipped. And this is what it's going to look like with any kind of astrophotography camera or DSLR camera. Again, if you don't have it equipped, uh, if you're trying to record a video, especially on the Canon Rebel T7, the Canon Rebel T7, you can't really adjust the, obviously the shutter speed because it's, it's not recording a photo, it's recording a video. So if you were to want to do things like take a time lapse video, you wouldn't really be able to do that again without a filter and that's why these filters are so necessary because not only does it protect the sensor is that it also allows you to have more capabilities with your camera itself so again here's a video without the without the solar filter on and look at the difference obviously you see no nothing right now it just looks like a white screen but after you put this solar filter on you can actually see the shape of the sun right there and you don't really have to worry about um, your sensor being damaged anymore because you do know that the camera sensor is now protected. Again, the sensor is an extremely important thing. You don't want that to get messed up. After you burn out your sensor, you pretty much just need to go get a new camera because you can't really fix that. As you can see, you really don't see very much detail, but when you actually put it into manual shutter mode, uh, that's when you really get to see the most detail on the sun. And that's where you're really able to see the quality of this filter. So let's go ahead and check that out. Now, I'd also like to give you an example about why exposure settings are so important. Let's check this out. So, taking a look at the exposure right now, you don't see any actual details on the surface of the sun itself. Now, it looks very blown out, and this is when it's good to uh, have your exposure time at about one second, around when the eclipse is reaching totality, so that you can get a proper view of the chromosphere of the sun. However, at this exposure time, you're not going to be able to see any details on the surface of the sun in regards to sunspots, and that's where you really have to try to pay attention to the settings. So you go to the settings here on your DSLR camera, and as you can see, it's uh, set currently at one sixth of a second. You go ahead and lower that down to about one four, four thousandth of a second, and that's when you're really going to be able to see the magic happen. You go back to the live view, you zoom in, go to the right here, and here you can actually see the details on the surface of the sun. You can see the actual sunspots on the sun itself. And if you want to actually get some good images of the sun's surface, that's when you go ahead and take the pictures at the shutter speed. However, again, if you're trying to get a video or a picture of the actual chromosphere of the sun once it reaches totality, make sure you don't have it set at the shutter speed because it will pretty much block out all of the light from that chromosphere and you'll be left with nothing more than a black picture. Of course, there are some details I'd like to point out about the filter itself from KNF Concept. It does come in a very nice hard case just like this with little plastic uh, holders in it. So you can choose whatever size filter you want. You can put it in here. It doesn't matter how you put it in. Whatever you do, it's going to hold it in place. And you don't have to worry about it uh, moving around or getting damaged while inside of the case. Now, all filters also, you can either get them threaded or they also sell magnetic filters, which is very handy. Of course, my camera, since it is a DSLR uh, camera, it does have a 55 millimeter thread 
and it comes in all different sizes. This one is actually a 50 millimeter thread. I should have gotten a 55, but since it is smaller, I can simply just go ahead and place it in without even having to screw it on. And since it is pointing up, looking directly at the sun, I don't have to worry about it falling off because it's not loose and it doesn't fall out. Now, maybe you're wondering, okay, so I have a DSLR, but I also have a C-Star. What if I want to use my C-Star S50 with the KNF Concept filter? Would it actually work or would it burn out the sensor? Again, that's an excellent question and one I'm sure you guys would want answered. Well, here's an example. Unfortunately, the filter that I have does not actually fit into the C-Star S50. So if you're willing to hold it up like this or at least just buy or 3D print an adapter, you could potentially use it. I don't have any issue with it. Um, in fact, I have to say that I quite prefer the quality of the C-Star S50 with the KNF Concept filter higher than I do uh, with the ZWO C-Star S50. And the reason I have to say that is because with this uh, KNF Concept filter, I do actually see a higher difference in regards to contrast and solar quality than I would with the ZWO filter, which you can see right here as well. So. Is it possible to use this with a telescope such as the C-Star S50? Yes, you can. It will not burn out your sensor and it is safe for you to use. Now this next portion of the video might get a little bit boring to some of you, uh, especially if this date has already passed April 8th. Um, if you are watching past that day, make sure that you go ahead and skip past this because it's not going to be particularly valid to you. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and read off a list of some of the best places to actually view the eclipse. Uh, on April 8th, 2024, and it's going to begin starting in Dallas, Texas, going to Idabel, Oklahoma, Little Rock, Arkansas, Poplar Bluff, Missouri, Paducah, Kentucky, Carbondale, Illinois, Evansville, Indiana, Cleveland, Ohio, Erie, Pennsylvania, Buffalo, New York, Burlington, Vermont, Lancaster, New Hampshire, and Caribou, Maine. Now, these are going to be some of the best places to actually view the eclipse, because uh, these are going to be the places where it actually does reach totality. Um, but I do have some stuff I recommend for all of you who are planning to go to watch the totality of the solar eclipse. Number one, make sure that you leave extremely early to get there, as in a day early if it's possible. The reason for that is because a lot of people are going to be going to watch this solar eclipse. So you're going to see a lot of traffic. And if you get stuck in traffic for too long, you're going to end up missing the actual eclipse, which trust me, you're not going to want to miss this one. One of the reasons I actually say you're not going to miss this one is because it's going to reach a very long amount of totality, especially in Texas. It's going to reach about four and a half minutes, which is actually a historic amount, um, as I don't believe it's reached that long before. Uh, at least that's not recorded. Um, also, at the same time, once it does reach totality, because the comet Pons Brooks is going to be so close to the sun, you're actually going to be able to see the comet Pons Brooks at the same time as the sun reaches totality. So you'll both be able to see totality of the sun and a comet at the same time. And trust me, you're not gonna wanna miss that because it's gonna be a spectacular sight to see. Now, if you do decide to try to take a picture of both the sun and the comet at the same time, I would definitely recommend that you try to merge photos instead of using uh, the solar filter while trying to take a picture of the comet. Because if you use the solar filter while trying to take a picture of the comet, pretty sure you can think that's not gonna work. It's gonna completely black out the comet. Um, but also if you try to take long exposures of the sun and the comet at the same time, also you're going to have an overexposed image. So make sure you just try to take both separate images of the sun in totality and the comet so you can merge the photos later on to make one composite image. Now in regards to the two different filters, there's an ND100,000 filter and the ND1 million filter. The way that we can really see the biggest difference in regards to the detail and how dark the filter actually is, is definitely going to have to be in the video mode. So you have a mini video mode, let's turn this on. It is currently running. And here is the ND100,000 filter. We installed the ND100,000 filter. And as you can see on the video, the sun looks very bright. As always, there's Hardly any detail to it. You can't really see any sunspots or anything. Again, it just looks like a white dot. And that's okay it's because this is good for when the eclipse actually does reach totality. You can actually see the, the chromosphere properly without having to worry about everything being underexposed. 
Um, it is good to have the sun overexposed in the state. But during the rest of the time of the eclipse, you might want to be able to see things like the sunspots. And that's where this other filter really makes a big difference. The ND100, uh, sorry, the ND1 million. So you take this off. And this is where, again, you're going to see the big difference. As you can see, there is a huge amount of difference between the detail and the darkness of the sun uh, using the ND1 million filter and using the ND100,000 filter. So, of course, if you're planning on trying to get a video of things like the sunspots on the sun, trying to get surface detail, definitely I would recommend you use the ND1 million. However, if you're trying to get proper imaging of totality, uh, I would definitely use the ND100,000. Um, of course, there, there's different aspects you have to come into play. Perhaps you want to take pictures um, of the sun during totality. Perhaps you want to take pictures of the sun uh, without it. You really have to pay attention to how dark these filters are going to make the sun look in order to get the proper image that you want. Now, in this kind of video, I would generally ask which of these two filters you would feel is the best pick for you. But given the fact that these two different filters have very two different uses due to the fact that they're somewhat darker, somewhat lighter, uh, I would definitely recommend that you guys get them both for the eclipse photography. The reason for that is because you're going to need the ND1 million for sunspots if you perhaps want to do a time lapse of the eclipse. Or you could use the ND100,000 once it's time to reach totality of the eclipse. So definitely let me know what you guys think in the comments. I would again definitely recommend that you guys get both of these. Uh, the links for them are in the description if you would like to check them out. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully you're going to be able to view the eclipse yourself. And I wish you all clear skies on that day.